How y'all doing? I want to ask everyone a question real quick. Who here knows what an engineer is? Yeah, yeah, it's an engineer. Don't feel bad, guys. I didn't know what an engineer was until a month before graduating high school. And I graduated with two engineering degrees from the university. So it's OK. Um, I grew up in out a town called Madison, Alabama, outside of Huntsville. Um, I have a brother, a mother, uh, uh, my mom, single parent. Uh, where I grew up, I was the only Hispanic kid in my school. And I was your typical kid. Football, baseball, basketball, track. I was captain of all these teams uh, in high school. Never thought about science. So my senior year in high school, I'm in an environmental science class. And with environmental science, that's the class everyone takes, because you know what? That's an easy A class. So you want to get that GPA higher, you're like, environmental science, I'm there. So um, going to class, there's 70 of us in this class. And so they're trying to downgrade the size. And here comes a chemistry two teacher, Miss Pickens, and I love her to death. She looks at me and she says, you come with me. I'm like, really? Out of 70 people here, you're gonna pick me? What, am I the only dark spot in the room? What's going on? <laughs> no, so I tell you what, that changed my life. That day she picked me to come to chemistry two. Chemistry is more than just elements and you know, mixing chemicals together. It's actually playing with science. So because of her, I got to actually do real science. I joined a team called Science Olympiad. Anyone here know what Science Olympiad is? It's a team that you can do in the high schools. Sign up for it. You get to really build things. We got to build rockets. We got to build these crazy things, steel bridges, popsicle stick bridges. And one of the things that I was left was a new design called a water strudel. It's like a little jet ski on water, but you had to make one yourself. And you got to use household products I use a Thousand Island salad dressing bottle. It was great. So I designed this thing, never done it before, and we went to regionals and I won. Went to state, I won. And that changed my life. That's when I knew I wanted to do something different. And that's when I asked my teacher what I want to be. She says, an engineer, and so forth. I went to college. Got to college, goal was to play college football. Got to do it in New Mexico. And first thing coach says on the first day of practice, What's your major? And I said, engineering, sir. He's like, what? Engineering. No, you, ain't do, you can't do engineering. You'll never have time to play football. Football's serious in college. It is in high school. It's serious. So in my, no one's going to tell me what I can do. I'm going to do engineering. That's what I'm going to do. So long story short, graduated mechanical and an aerospace engineering degree. Loved it. First job out of co uh, high school, uh, college, I worked at Johnson Space and NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas as a test engineer. And so one of the test engineers I did was hypervelocity impact testing. And what is that? So we design shields for any spacecraft that goes into space. Real quick, can I have you come up real quick? Here, catch that. Oh, 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 oh. So we had we to build shields for these tests for, the, for our space flight articles. We build shields for our space shuttles, International Space Station, so forth. Now I need you to real do a quick stand up, stand up. So this is just junk. We've been in space since the 60s, and we got junk floating all around in space right now. And this little thing is just a, sh a small example. I want you to hit this. OK, let's pretend you hit that. So we're going to pretend you, boom, it hit, fell, what happened? Nothing, right? So what if we're in our space shuttle, we're fly, floating around, we're, no, we're in the International Space Station, we're floating around the Earth. Can you please cue the video? The same piece of metal. That happens. 17,000 miles an hour. First thing you do when you get to Houston and you're a test engineer, they tell you, you test for the safety of the astronauts. Your key priority is the safety of the crew before anything else, before mission and so forth. So the entry hole, exit hole. You hit this thing here, nothing. That same plastic ball in space, you destroy the International Space Station the size of a football field. So did that for five years, got to travel, um, enjoyed that. It was a great experience. Got to meet great astronauts. Got to see uh, inspect the space shuttles. Who here has been to the Intrepid here? Got to see the Enterprise. 
That's really cool, huh? I got to actually work on some of the, the space shuttles that are in LA, the Discovery and Endeavor, that's in um, Florida. So I, I actually got to work on those space shuttles and inspect them. It was a really great experience. Changed jobs. I wanted more than just to be an individual test engineer. Uh, my next goal I wanted to be was an overall materials. I wanted to be more than just a test engineer. So I became a materials engineer. Materials engineer, now I'm not just responsible for testing one side of the project. Now I got to test other materials. I got to burn things, bend things, break things. Anything we went to space, we tested. We broke it, tested to make sure it was safe for the astronauts. The clothes the astronauts wear in space. We, we actually make those ourselves in-house because flammability. We gotta make sure it's safe for the astronauts. So we make all those processes. So I did that for two years, loved it, got to work on some cool missions. Then I moved on to what I do now is a system engineer. So as a system engineer, our job is to communicate. As I was a test engineer, then I was a materials engineer, now a system engineer. So think of me as like the team captain of a football team. I'm the one responsible for the team making sure the players are in the right spot, everything's working together, everything's flowing together, and we're communicating back and forth from the project. So the project I'm working now, in space manufacturing. I am the lead system engineer for in space manufacturing. And so, real quick, what do you think this is? Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up right here. So, take that, take that. Show everyone, wave it up in the air. So, we have a 3D printer on the space station right now. Pass it around, pass it around. And so, one of the thing is, we asked an astronaut, what are some things that you need? And we had an astronaut on board, and Commander ba Buzz comes up and tells me, he says, you know what, it's really dry, and I got this itch in my back sometimes. And it's like, okay, could you design a back scratcher? And let me tell you, you see that basket? We went through like a dozen iterations because you have to go through this whole safety, that whole process talking to here and here. We did that like a dozen times. So I asked him, well, why do you need back? He says, well, you know, I don't really want to ask my, my partner over to scratch my back. And we got some important equipment here. This doesn't feel right going. Argh. And so we asked, okay, what do you want the back scratcher to be like? Boom. And we created a back scratcher. So a lot of other different units are being done. Here's another piece. Uh, why don't you come over here, come, 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 take that. What do you think, hold it, show it for everyone, show it for everyone. What do you think that is? Yes. A wrench, close, close, we'll get to a wrench. That's actually a, a oxygen sensor holder. We basically attach that to the environmental control life support system. So currently, who here likes to drink urine or pee? <laughs> I've had some, tell you what, it's not bad actually. It wasn't bad. Sweat, urine. Well, we've developed a way that we can take your sweat and your pee and turn it into drinkable water and create oxygen from it. So the ECLIS system, the Environmental Control Life Support System, we use that. We developed that. Currently, they would take a sensor, put it in, and it would tell us how much oxygen concentration would have. Well, the astronauts holding this for 20 minutes, so they got other things to do. So we developed this holder for it. What's the next thing an astronaut might need? that we're cur currently printing right now? A spoon. So the spoon is another object here. Let's have it on this, why don't you come up, come up, take a look at the spoon. So when an astronaut goes into space, he's given many things, but he's given one of those, and it always stays in his pocket. He's only given one, he's told, don't lose it, because you don't get another one. So if they lose their spoon and their spoon breaks, guess what they use? Their fingers. You know, it's not really funny, the banana pudding like this, I promise. So, 3D printing, we're being used in it right now in space. There's a lot of things, these things we're showing are very good as samples. Here's another tool, our wrench. And one of the things we're trying to, take it, take it, pass it back, pass it back, show it around. One of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to show that we don't have to take things from the ground anymore. We don't have to take a dozen wrenches. We don't have to take a dozen spoons. If we can just take the product that makes it and actually make it in space, save the weight on the ground because the most important part of you know, manufacturing thing is the weight it costs. It costs right now currently, I think it's $100,000 per pound that we send up in space. Okay, so if you look at me right now, there's a reason why I couldn't be an astronaut. <laughs> so, 
The future. What is 3D printing going to be in the future? It's a jar of Mars simulant. So Mars simulant is basic, excuse me, the dirt from Mars, but it's not from Mars. It's from a volcano in Arizona that has the same properties of what the Mars dirt would be when we go there. So we ask, well, what do you need that for? Well, wouldn't it be cool if there was Walmarts in space and we could build them up? Can you clear the next video? See that building on the left? That's our Walmart in the future, I think. So our goal is to be able to 3D print houses and huts for astronauts and to be able to do it in 24 hours. So if we could build your house in 24 hours so you can live in, wouldn't that be great? So we're working towards that. And so that Mars simulator, we, run, we know there's water on Mars. We know that if we have enough dirt, the additives, we can process this. Currently, we're working with the Army and other uh, departments here, uh, here in uh, the US to be able to create this process. So that is a future, 3D printing. We do in-space manufacturing, where it's in space, terrestrial, the moon, the Mars, go to asteroid. We want to be able to do this for our astronauts. So in closing, you know, with this, there's always goals. There's always things we're trying to get better on. And, you know, I live by this. I told you as a kid, I, did, I, was never, I never thought I was going to be an engineer. I always thought I was going to be something else. And you got a lot of people with a lot of cool jobs. And, and you know, you look at your jobs, oh, it's okay. It's, it's, but, you know, you realize you really do have a cool job when you see all this. And I live by this. Th I want to leave you with these three things, kids. I mean, no matter what, I call it the three Bs. You want to be successful? Listen to these three Bs. Number one, be respectful. Always be respectful. Number two, be yourself. All right, you want to always be yourself. And the third one, and this is the one that I really, really harp on, is be tomorrow. And I say be tomorrow real seriously because you always have to have goals. It's like I can tell you right now, my be tomorrow is that I believe someday I will be a NASA administrator for NASA here in the US. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. You're amazing.